Today we're going to be doing a rapid fire review of the running shoes I've been using for the last couple months. This isn't going to be some technical review where we cover materials and build, last width or heel drop or any of that nonsense. This is going to be more of like a new age review of the overall feel of the shoe. How does it feel on my foot? What I think the shoe is good for? A lot of my opinion and very little science or technical speak. The first shoe I wanna talk about is the Solomon Sense Ride 3. So I swore off Sense Rides because I felt like they just fell apart, like wet tissue paper, usually around 200 miles. But I thought, you know what, the new version came out, I'd give them I'd give them another chance. And right out of the box, I took these on the Teton Crest Trail. And they were great, and I had high hopes. And I was chugging along, putting the miles on these shoes. But eventually, as you can see here, the wear in the usual place started to happen. Now this could be because I have some kind of freakish foot with a massive last width, but I feel like my last width is around 100 millimeters, which is average, maybe, I don't know. I haven't really, it's not a discussion I have with my friends, you know, what's your last width? But I feel like maybe I bulge a little in this area and that's what leads to the wear and tear because other people who have run in these shoes don't suffer from the same problem, but I do. So just know that if you get these shoes, your mileage may vary. And the tread is still very well and very much intact. I'd say these shoes have probably 200 miles to 250 miles on them. A great shoe, I feel like a good overall shoe they can handle on trail, off trail, they can handle side hilling, they can handle a little bit of scrambling and they can handle distance. So this is like a great uh, one quiver, you know, shoe, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, it can do almost everything. And if you've got the right foot, maybe it'll last longer for you. The next shoe I wanna talk about is one of my favorite pair of shoes. And that is the Hoka Speed Goat 4. And when I say my favorite pair of shoes, I mean, my favorite pair of shoes to wear when I'm just running on trails. Now the Speed Goat 3s I tried and hated. The fit was completely different than the 2s. But I think with the 4s, they've gone back to whatever it was they were doing with the 2s. So unless you've got an insanely narrow foot, skip the 3s and go straight to the 4s because the Hoka Speed Goat 4 is a great shoe. The traction's amazing. The cushioning is what you would expect from a Hoka, almost pillow-like. And overall, they last a long time, so you'll get your money's worth uh, from these shoes. Uh, when they do fall apart, you'll be very sad and eager to buy another pair, if you can find them on sale, which I think I got these for 20% off at a local shoe shop. Again, a great shoe if you're just going to run on the trails, and that's kind of what these are for. When it comes to me, just running on the trails, I take these bad boys out. For a brief moment during the space between the Speed Goat 2 and the Speed Goat 4, I did find another great max cushion running shoe, and that is the New Balance Hiero shoe. This is the version 5, and they have a version 6 that looks identical. And this turned out to be an awesome running shoe, even though it's a bit strange. It has this thing back here, which at the beginning felt like it was springing me forward. Whether that was real or not, or if it was imagined, I don't know, but it did definitely boost me a little bit. They were great long distance. My feet felt amazing even after doing, you know, multiple 20 milers. They put on a ton of miles, and actually the construction of the shoe was great up until I hooked a stick perfectly and tore that, and then my toe kind of sticks out here, but there's still a mesh protecting my foot. I really enjoyed these shoes and I plan on buying another pair of the New Balance Hiero version six. The only thing that irritated me when it came to the shoes is whenever I would tighten the laces, and let's see if I can replicate the noise. No, no, I can't. But when you're wearing the shoe and you go to tighten the laces, first of all, they're very reluctant to become tight, which probably means they don't get loose, but they also make this nails on the chalkboard like sound. So if that's my only complaint, and it's as superficial as that, probably means it's a good shoe. And like I said, it's lasted maybe three, three to 400 miles. Great shoe, loved it. Didn't care that the color was kind of ugly and plan on buying another version. Now the next shoe I bought, hoping to kind of fill the gap between the Speed Goat and the Sense Ride. 
thought it would be nice to have a shoe with a little bit of cushion for a longer run, but could handle some side hilling, some off trail work, blah, blah, blah. And so I bought these, the DinaFit Ultra 100s. And actually, you look at this tread and you think that is, that's just pathetic. We're, some of us are used to giant lugs. I think all of these shoes have bigger looking tread than the DinaFit Ultra 100. But this Pomoka tread handled the trail great. And I actually managed to get off trail a couple times, do some scrambling, and it was a great shoe. The only weird thing about this shoe is that it has this little thing you can tuck your laces into. And the, you know, this system here doesn't necessarily work great. And some shoes implement, I mean, Solomon's got a great system where you tuck the lace into the tongue, but doing it right here, just it just comes right back out. And it seems to be Dina Fitt's favorite design, which isn't justified because it's a terrible design or I'm terrible at doing it. But either way, every time I tuck in my laces into this part, it just kind of like slowly works its way out. Also makes attaching a gaiter kind of hard. And I'm a gaiter guy. So for me, it was annoying trying to get my gaiter in here and, to, and trying to get it to hook the laces. But overall, pretty good shoe. DinaFit doesn't necessarily fit my feet very well. This is my third pair of DinaFit shoes. The other two I had to return because I don't know, they just don't don't fit as well as some of the others. You got to find it. You got to finesse the fit when it comes to Dina fit. I find myself saying the word fit a lot doing this review, but actually did what I bought them to do. And that is fill the gap between like a sense ride and uh, the speed goat four. These shoes have cushion, but can also go off trail if you have to go off trail. And they've got great tread, great traction, good feel overall. Just, you gotta find the fit. Don't guess, I had to guess. I ordered these from Europe, so I really rolled the dice. There was no returning them without probably having to pay a hefty fee and using Google Translate a lot. So yeah, these are the DinaFit Ultra 100s. Pretty good shoe. Now for another foreign pair of shoes, this is the Salewa Ultra Train. Now if I'm correct, DinaFit and Salewa, their shoes are made by the same company. So there's a lot of similarities. And again, they've got this lace tuck system that kind of sucks, but the laces at least come out here at the end. So you can use these with gaiters. I bought these shoes because I use them on the Art Traverse and I think they're great. I don't think they're great running shoes. I put them in the same class as like the La Sportiva Boshido, but they're great hiking running shoes. Meaning they can handle a little bit of running, but they're awesome off trail. They're awesome on ridge traverses. They've got this hard plastic thing right here in the arch of the foot that protects you from rock poking. The only downside is that they don't have one solid piece of tread. And as you can see, the corner started to come off. And for a shoe like this, you don't want to go out once you start getting that because you don't want to be out in the middle of something and tear the heel off but it was starting to fall apart. So these are gonna go into the garbage, but second pair of Ultra Train, you can still buy these. They're a great shoe. The new version uh, looks almost identical. And if you're looking for a shoe to hike in a little bit more than run, these are something you should consider. Traction's great, cushioning's ample. Just uh, like I said, not great for running long distances, much like the Bushido. Now for my last pair of shoes is the Solomon XA Elevate. I don't even know if they're still making this shoe. Uh, I, you can find them for really cheap on all the discount sites and either they're discontinuing it or they're doing a new update. But I bought, bought a second pair because I found them for about 60 bucks and they're stiffer than the Sense Ride, a lot stiffer. And so for me, I would consider them more of a hiking running shoe. They do more hiking than running, although you can do long runs in them. They, they're great for rock protection. They're great for scrambling if you don't have to do anything technical. And I'd say overall, I'm very happy with the shoes. I mean, that's obvious. This is my second pair and I haven't used these ones very much. I put them in the same category as the Salewa Ultra Train. And so these are the shoes that I've used over the last three months to six months. And if you were to ask me how I would categorize these shoes or what I would use them for, if I was gonna go out for a long run, meaning 20 plus miles, I would definitely use the Speedgoat 4 
or the Hiero version five or version six. If I was gonna go out for a run and maybe wanted, thought I might do a little side adventure, I would definitely take the Sense Ride 3 or the Ultra Train or the Dinafit Ultra 100s. If I was kind of looking to do more of a, you know, run up to the base of a hike and then do a hike off trail and then do a short run back to the car, in that case, I would definitely use the Salewa Ultra Train or the Solomon XA Elevate. Anyway, that's my rapid fire review. It's a little short on technical information or any scientific facts that you could use to base your decision on. It's mostly just me telling you how they felt in the hundreds of miles I put on these shoes. And hopefully there's some value in my opinion of these shoes as you head out into summer and you're looking for the footwear you're going to be using on the trails.